am I the asshole for ruining my boyfriend's family Christmas? So my boyfriend is very close with his family and I know they mean a lot to him. We have been together for a while now and are moving in together next month. He was deployed for several months and returned home from deployment two days before Thanksgiving. Instead of spending any time together when he got home, we got up the next morning and went straight to his family's house in Tennessee to spend the holiday with them. We agreed before he even got home that we will be spending Thanksgiving with his family and Christmas with my family back in Georgia where we live because I have younger siblings and lots of children in my family who still believe in Santa Claus and the Christmas magic. Plus, my mom just remarried, and this is the first holiday my little brother will be expected to spend with the new step family, who treats us very poorly because we are from her previous marriage. Long story short, we had a great time up there for Thanksgiving. We stayed for almost a week. I took an unpaid vacation right before the holidays in order to make that happen for him, with the understanding that I would get to be with my little brother for Christmas morning. While we were up there for the holiday, my boyfriend's mom found out that we were planning on spending five days leading up to Christmas with her in Tennessee, then driving back down to Georgia on Christmas. Christmas Eve so we can spend Christmas with my family. This turned into a big fight where she insisted that he had to be home for Christmas Day itself because Christmas means so much to his dad and his grandparents are coming. We tried to explain we would be spending the entire week leading up to Christmas with them, but just not Christmas morning since there are children in my family who believe that's when Santa Claus comes. His family is very upset that I am refusing to come up for Christmas and my boyfriend does not want to spend the holidays separate, so we were in a bit of an impasse. I know he has been gone and he wants to spend holidays with his family. It makes sense to me and I would be okay with splitting the holidays and doing them separately, but everyone in his family is an adult so I don't see any reason we can't just do Christmas on the 24th with their family if he insists he doesn't want to spend Christmas away from me. Am I the asshole for refusing to cave on this? I think it's only fair that we each get to spend a holiday with our family. Edit for the record, he is pushing back against his family for this and advocating for me to see my brother for Christmas, but I am starting to feel really guilty about the whole thing because I know his mom is putting a lot of pressure on him and that he feels terrible about disappointing his family. I don't want to make it out as if he's just caving to their BS. I'm just not sure it's worth his family being this upset or I should just cave and do Christmas with them as to not rock the boat. Am I the asshole for telling my husband if he fights for custody of his kids, I will divorce him? I am vehemently child-free. I am sterilized and I have no intention of having or caring for any child. I married my husband last year and did not know he had any children until five days ago. I travel for work, I work for myself, and I have an amazing pay for very few active hours working. I'm a honeymoon planner and I own my own business. We have a joint account for bills and we have our own separate accounts for savings and fund money. My husband sat me down five days ago and told me he hadn't been completely honest with me and revealed he has two children. 10 and 7. He pays regular child support. However, it dips into his fun money and he wants to be able to have fun like I am. So he said he would fight for 50-50 custody. I was furious he had lied to me and was even more angry when he told me he wanted 50-50 custody. He works 12 to 16 hour shifts as a nurse and that would mean I would have to care for the children when I'm not working or I'm working from home. I told him if he fights for custody, I will leave him. We have a prenup so divorce will be rather simple. I get 100% of my business, all of my savings and fun money, and the house as I inherited it from my grandmother. He called me an asshole and told me I should step up so that he could have more money in his savings and for fun, and because the kids won't be much of a hassle due to their ages. So am I the asshole for telling him I will divorce him if he goes through with filing for custody? I am I the asshole for telling my son that if he is uncomfortable about his sister not wearing a bra, then he should cover up too? My 33 male daughter, 16 female, got into an argument with her brother, 15 male, because she sometimes doesn't wear bras around the house. She still covered up, but she just wears a t-shirt instead. She said that wearing bras are painful and it makes her uncomfortable, so I didn't mind it. However, my son recently started expressing his discomfort and saying that it makes him uncomfortable and she should start wearing bras again. My daughter heard this and got upset and saying that she wasn't bothering anyone. He said that he was bothered by it and that she should cover up. I told her that if he's uncomfortable, then maybe she can put on a bra when she leaves her room. She got upset and told me that it's unfair that she has to wear a bra when her brother doesn't have to cover his man boobs. He got upset at this and accused her of making fun of him. I told him that she wasn't making fun of him and told him that it was a fair statement. I told him that if she's also uncomfortable, then he should start wearing a t-shirt when he leaves his room. He started crying and accused me of calling him fat, which confused me. All those words never came out of my mouth. I felt bad and wanted to let my son know that he misinterpreted what I meant 
But when I went to talk to him, he just told me to leave him alone and wouldn't stop crying, so I decided to give him some space. My wife told me that I know how sensitive our son could be about his weight, and I should have been nicer about it. This made me feel extremely bad, and I tried to apologize to him again, but he just ignored me and wouldn't even speak or look at me. I thought I was just being fair, but I don't know. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for telling my daughter she has to understand that choosing this wedding date would result in my family not going? Two-ish years ago, my brother, my nephew, and my mother were in a car accident. My mother died instantly. My brother and nephew passed away the next day. My family was small. Me, my husband, daughter, parents, brother, wife, and two nephews. Their loss was devastating for my life and for everyone, even worse for my father and my sister-in-law. One year ago, my daughter, Betty, 25 female, was proposed to by her fiancé and preparations began. During this process, they chose the date based on the day they met, seven years ago, and the day is exactly two years since the death of my brother and nephew. I tried to talk to her about moving because it is still a very difficult day for our family and even for myself, but she insisted, saying that the venue had the date available and it would be perfect because all of the other available dates aren't so good and wouldn't be so important. I respected her decision. Recently, she sent invitations to everyone and, as I predicted, my sister-in-law, my nephew, 24 male, and my father responded that they would not attend and despite not telling her, my family and my sister-in-law told me that the day choice was an offense to them. I decided to remain neutral at some point. I confirmed my presence and my husband's. Today, my daughter called me unhappy that no one but us confirmed. My husband doesn't have family on his side. And her family part was empty and she expected everyone to go on that date, even more so after she explained the reason to them about the date. They still refused. I tried to be supportive, but I said, in quotations, Love, this date is difficult even for me, but I will go to your wedding, but you have to understand that this choice of date has consequences and you would have to deal with the consequences of your choices. She exploded at me saying that everyone was against her, it's not her fault the dates coincided, and everyone could make an effort to go a few hours for her, but they decided just not to, and I was basically saying, I told you so. She hung up on me without answering, and we still haven't spoken. My husband said he understands me, but I should have stayed away from it. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for kicking my wife out of the house after she punched my mom in the face? What? <laughs> My situation went from bad to worse in a matter of weeks, and I don't know where else to turn. I need to know if I was wrong. Possibly a validation thing, because my life is so fucking dumb right now. My wife and I have been together for eight years, and she just gave birth to our first and last baby two months ago. Up until my wife got pregnant, my mom loved her. I'm not sure what the fuck is wrong with my mom or why the switch happened, but after my wife first got pregnant, my mom started being very clingy to me and started avoiding my wife at all costs. She told everyone she wasn't excited for the pregnancy, etc. I threatened to go no contact with her when my wife was about seven months pregnant and after she snapped out of it for the most part and stopped being so ignorant. The comments 100% stopped, though she was still clinging to me. Now, a week ago, my mom, my sister, and my sister's husband, and my sister's daughter, who is 12, came over for dinner. I prepared the meal. Before my wife could eat anything, our daughter got fussy, so my wife excused herself to go feed the baby and to get her down to sleep. I thought I prepared enough, but apparently not, because my niece was still starving. She's 5'5 five five and 190 pounds. I haven't seen her in a year, and she was not that size then, so I didn't exactly portion in an extra three helpings for a child. So it's on me. I apologized, and I told her that I hadn't made any more, and I offered her crackers. After that, I just went outside with my sister's husband to smoke a cigarette and shoot the breeze. Didn't think anything of it. But then I hear yelling from inside. When I walked in, my wife and my mom were screaming at each other. Apparently, my mom, who saw me put my wife's food away, gave my niece my wife's portion of the food. Oh. 
As I was walking inside, I heard my mom say, looks like you can afford to skip a meal and <gasps> slap my wife's stomach. Right? Oh my God. Sorry. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. As soon as I get ready to step in, literally fast walking towards them, yelling enough. My wife winds back and punches my mother square in the face and drops her. Oh, good. <laughs> the whole house went silent. Outside of my mom crying and holding her face. I tell everyone to get the fuck out. Immediately, everyone leaves and my wife just turns towards the counter and leans with her hands on the counter and face down, eyes closed. I look at my wife and say, you two, leave now. She says, really? She's crying at this point. I say, yep. She packs up her and the baby and leaves. Wow. I text her that night and say, I just need space. I need to decompress and come to terms with what just happened. She doesn't respond to me. The next five days, I'm texting and calling, and I get nothing left on red. She shows up here today, eight days later, and hands me divorce paperwork and my baby and says, here, you have a bit to hang out while I pack. Where I'm breastfeeding, we can work out a visitation schedule that is either at your place or my mother's until she will take a bottle. I told her that's not what I want. I don't want to separate. I just needed time to process her punching my mother in the face. She said, you needing time to process gave me time to process the fact that I refused to be in this situation any longer. I defended myself. I initially felt bad and remorseful, but you making me leave when I needed you made me see more clear. I'm done. I'm sorry for what I did, but there's no fixing this. She refused to speak to me at the rest of the time that she was there. My house feels so empty now, and I don't know what to do. Am I the asshole for making her leave after she punched my mom in the face? <laughs> Am I the asshole for not delaying our rebuild for our pregnant neighbors? We are planning on doing a major rebuild on our old row house and finalized everything around two weeks ago. We are excited as it has taken us nearly 1.5 years to get here. We texted our neighbors this weekend to let them know construction would start at the end of the month for approximately three to four months. We are not extremely close with our neighbors, but always pleasant. One neighbor came by to talk to us after we sent the text and expressed disappointment in the timing because his girlfriend is pregnant and due next week. We ourselves were never told of her pregnancy until December and that she was due sometime in February. He also asked about our rebuild on his own, and my partner mentioned it might happen sometime in April, which was our original start date. We told him how sorry we were for the timing, but obviously it wasn't intentional. Ten minutes after he left, we received a text asking if we were available to talk the next day about possible so solutions and if we could delay the rebuild by three to four months. We agreed to meet, but told him delaying was not possible because we already have another place lined up for us to live in, contractor agreement, etc. Needless to say, the meeting was not ideal. The girlfriend cried the entire time while apologizing for crying and hormones. She said she has not cried as much as she has in the past 24 hours as she has in the past two years. She's worried how this will affect the baby because she's stressed now. She couldn't believe that we just sent them a text message with only a month in advance and that we should have come talk to them in person as this was the first she was hearing of this. Did we even put ourselves in their shoes? They have nowhere else to go. They are concerned with how this affects their own sleep because the baby will be up at night and they need to sleep during the day and they won't be able to with the construction. If we did the rebuild three months later, then it would at least be summer and they can go outside to escape the noise. They also kept repeating, what if we just say, no, this can't happen. We obviously feel for them as new parents expecting a baby, and we all live in old row houses, so I get how noisy and disruptive it will be. We told them we would get them a build schedule so they could see what days would be the noisiest, and they want us to ask a contractor if there can be quiet hours from 12 to 3. 
I don't think that is realistic and don't know what else we can do to amend the situation. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for telling my brother he is an idiot for wanting a paternity test? I, 20 male, have a brother, Jack, 29 male, who is married to his wife, Amy, 26. About two years ago, they had their first child, Lisa. On our side of the family, we all look extremely alike. Both of our parents have brown hair and brown eyes. So do me and Jack. Amy, on the other side, is from Norway and looks very different. She has blonde hair and blue eyes and genuinely has a very Scandinavian look to her, opposed to our very American look. So to what I thought was no one's surprise, of course Lisa got features from her mom. They look pretty much identical, and it seems that they look more alike as time passes on. This was all fine from my understanding. I don't know why it would even be a problem. But about one year ago, my brother started telling me about how his co-worker has a daughter that looks like the female version of him. He said that everyone said that the firstborn, especially if it's a daughter, is a spitting image of their father. I did not find that weird, as I had heard that before, but I think it is kind of obvious that genetics work weird and in different ways, and what is common is not always what happens to everyone. I told him just that, that genetics work in surprising ways sometimes. However, as time went on, he started saying some weird stuff like this, like asking me where I thought Lisa got her blonde hair from, which obviously was from Amy. He did this with other stuff like the nose, the eyes, the little mannerisms Lisa has. It was extremely obvious it was all coming from Amy, which I always told him. Now I have found out that he is demanding that they take a paternity test as he is extremely sure that Lisa is not his. Amy is extremely distraught by this and has tried to explain to him that Lisa is his, that she just got stuff from Amy and that happens. He is threatening her with divorce if she doesn't agree to do a paternity test, as that would be his confirmation that he that she cheated. She got to our parents' house and broke down, telling us all this. Our parents have texted him and called him. I have too. But now he is angry with us too because we are taking the cheater's side. His words. She and Lisa are staying with us and she is extremely confused on where this is all coming from. I called my brother yesterday and this time he picked up the phone. I managed to have a conversation with him and asked him why, if he had any evidence that Amy ever did cheat or why he thought so. He basically told me that he did not have any evidence, but he knew and was 100% sure on that. I asked him why and how. He told me that the firstborn daughters always behave, look, and are a carbon copy of their father, but Lisa is not even remotely like that. He said that if it isn't like that, then Lisa would at least have some features from him, which she doesn't. I was getting angry at him because it just seems so weird to even come to that conclusion. I told him that he was an idiot for all of this and that he will regret all this later on. He hung up and is even madder at all of us, saying that Amy has manipulated us all and that we can't crawl back to him when the truth is out. I have not told Amy that this is the reason or that I have talked to him because I don't think she will react that well to hearing this. However, my parents are saying that it was extremely unnecessary of me to behave like this when I got talking to him, as this may have been our chance to have a mature and serious conversation with him. So, am I the asshole for how I reacted? Am I the asshole for calling my husband unreasonable for canceling the holiday trip just because me and the kids couldn't help him in an emergency? My husband and I have been together for four years. I have two kids, 17 and 19, and their half-brother is three years old. This week, my husband had an emergency. His dad was having a medical emergency and wanted someone to watch our son. He asked my older son and he refused because he was going out with friends. He also asked my daughter, but she locked herself in her room to study. I was at the restaurant with my brother meeting his girlfriend for the first time. My husband ended up taking our son with him to the hospital and his mom watched him from there. He came home and was lashing out on everybody, calling us selfish and unfeeling. I tried to explain that the kids were busy, but he told me to get the F out with all that bull because our older son could have skipped the hangout and watched his brother, and my daughter could have watched her brother while studying instead of locking herself in her room. He scolded me as well, but I told him I couldn't leave lunch with my brother since he was visiting town and this was the only chance to meet his girlfriend. He yelled some more then told us that he was canceling the family holiday trip for Christmas this year. The two older kids were upset and said it was unfair. I called him unreasonable to cancel the trip and punishing the kids and possibly me like this. He refused to discuss it later. Now me and the kids aren't speaking to him and he's saying good riddance. 
Edit to say, my husband was supposed to watch our son at the time. That's why I went to see my brother at the restaurant. The kids aren't used to watching their brother when neither parent is home. Just a small little update from the OP. Once my husband just house, told us that he'll be spending Christmas candle, with his family, saying he needs to be around his dad anyway. The kids the said house. they will just go to their dads since they and my husband are still not talking. Neither of the kids are happy with how things turned out. So I feel like things have gotten out of hand and the problem got bigger. He's now choosing to basically abandon us on Christmas and also keep our son away from me and his siblings. My girlfriend says I need to get rid of my dead wife's stuff or she's leaving. I first got married at the age of 18 to my girlfriend I'd had since age 15. We enjoyed six years of marriage together before she died in a motorcycle accident, leaving me broken and severely depressed for years. A bit over one year ago, four years after my wife's passing, I met my current girlfriend at a work event and we really hit it off. I decided that it was time for me to start looking for a serious partner again and that my wife would have wanted me to be happy. My current girlfriend and I became more serious over time and we moved in together two weeks ago. I've talked with her extensively about my decision deceased wife and the mental health issues it brought to me, and she has been nothing but supportive and loving. The problems began after we moved in together. I have a small chest that I used to keep under my bed that has a few things that belong to my deceased wife, along with some photos of the two of us. During the moving process, my girlfriend noticed the chest and asked about it, so I explained what it was and showed her the contents. I didn't really expect it to be a big deal, but since I showed her, things have never been worse for us. She sat me down that night and explained that because I still had the chest and wanted to keep it, it was an indication to her that I hadn't moved on from my deceased wife and that she doesn't think she can continue the relationship unless I, quote, get rid of it. I was pretty shocked at this and told her that I needed some time to think about it. Well, it's been two weeks now and I still don't know what to do. My current girlfriend and I had no major problems up until this point and she's asking me daily when I plan to get rid of it and says she can't live in the same place as the chest. I really don't want to get rid of it, but I want to continue my relationship with her as well. What can I say to get her to understand? Or am I being crazy for keeping those things for years? I bought and gave my granddaughter a DNA test. Get ready with me, anonymous story time. This is about my granddaughter. She is 15 years old. She's always had it rough since middle school, especially because she looked different from her siblings. Personally, I was even confused to how she had curly ginger hair while the rest of her siblings and family had dark hair. I just knew that there was something odd. I have questions of my own, but if we're being honest, I'd rather not know because I love my granddaughter. This issue came up when my granddaughter came up to me and told me that her parents had banned her from getting an ancestry test. I did speak to my son and daughter-in-law and mentioned to them that something fishy was going on around her birth and that they needed to let her know and all they told me was to not worry about it. Not to mention, they also denied it. Fast forward two years later, my granddaughter is now 17 years old. She is now in high school and she mentioned to me that she has a biology class because her parents weren't giving her any answers. My granddaughter went to her biology teacher and told her a little bit of her situation. Long story short, her biology teacher told her that it was odd for her to have some traits. My granddaughter was so stressed, she just wanted to know the truth, so she ended up coming to me and asking me if I was able to buy her a DNA test because her parents kept denying a lot of information from her and when she asked them if they can buy it for her, they did not want to, so the next person she ran to was me. I felt extremely guilty telling her no, so I ended up giving in and buying her a DNA test. Basically, she is not her mother's kid. The real story is my son ended up getting another girl pregnant when her bio mother ended up giving birth to my granddaughter, she ended up giving her up. This situation has blown up in the family and my granddaughter is now extremely pissed off because her parents lied to her when she gave them countless of opportunities and times to be honest with her. I'm also getting a ton of hate because I'm the one who bought her the DNA test. It's gone to the point where the entire family won't talk to me and that's making my granddaughter even more mad. I'm starting to think that maybe I was in the wrong for buying my granddaughter the DNA test instead of her parents actually coming clean and letting her know the actual truth. What would you have done if you were in my shoes? Say for instance, it wasn't a granddaughter, it was your siblings or it was your cousins. Would you have done the same thing?
This girl really had the audacity. Ready with me story time. I was once really good friends with this girl. We were friends for 10 plus years. She was my right hand girl, but keyword was. We are no longer friends. Basically, this girl and I were best friends and I remember there was this Oi! There was this other girl who I just knew didn't like me and me as a person I'm very quick to pick up on people's energy and their intentions and I just had this gut instinct that she didn't like me but she was just cool with me because she was also really cool with my best friend. I could be wrong but in my opinion I felt like this other girl will give her the name Cassandra. I felt like Cassandra was always jealous of me and my ex-best friends friendship because she wished to be in my shoes if that makes any sense at all i felt like i was always just cool with cassandra because she was always in the picture and when i say she was always in the picture we all grew up playing sports together so there wasn't a day where i wasn't going to see this girl you know we were always at the park together and again we had the same mutual friends like there was no way of avoiding this cassandra girl every time it was us three or other people but obviously me and my best friend were there and also this other girl were there i just let her have her time with her because you can just tell that she just envied me i'm sorry but that is how i felt people can say otherwise but that is truly how i how i felt and also too my ex best friend at that time did know that i feel like i was just kind of cool with this girl because she was always around and one thing about me is i do not do drama and i'm also one of the most nicest person ever back then i never used to speak up i never had like any boundaries set and i tolerated a lot of bullshit let me tell you not to mention we were all three on the same sports team i grew up playing softball almost my entire life up until half of my high school years and so of course as a teammates you guys have each other's numbers you guys are in group chats etc again i really want to specify the bond that me and my ex-best friend had because it was inseparable everyone would always compliment our friendship they would always say oh my god you and beep are goals i want a friend like you like i'm telling you guys we were like this i swore this girl was gonna be my best friend for the rest of my life my ex-best friend's birthday was coming up and this cassandra girl messages me and I feel like during that time, I was just trying so hard to get close to my best friend. Again, they were already friends. They were cool. I'm not a hater. Like, if my best friend had other girlfriends, then cool. At the end of the day, I knew where her and our friendship stood, you know? I was never really, like, that jealous friend. But I remember one day, this Cassandra girl messages me. And she was like, hey, what are you going to get your ex-best friend for her birthday? And my ex-best friend, she loved butterflies. And if I'm not mistaken, she also mentioned to me how she always wanted a butterfly necklace and so me being the person that i am i am such a giver i love to buy people things i love to put a smile on other people's faces so i knew right off the bat that i was going to get this girl a butterfly necklace including other gifts so like I said, this Cassandra girl messages me and I end up telling her what I'm going to get my best friend not thinking that she was going to get her the same gift. I was like, hey, I'm gonna end up getting her this and then I remember she was just like, okay, that was literally the end of the conversation. A couple of days pass by and I get another text message from her and she goes, hey, where are you gonna buy her the necklace? Like at that time, I already had the necklace. Remember, she was also sending me like pictures of necklaces too butterfly necklaces to be exact and i was like dude there's no way this girl's gonna go and get her the same necklace the fact that you're trying so hard to like please this girl or like take her away from me or whatever you're whatever you were trying to do like whatever your motive was like I, it just it just blows my mind how girls are like this right i ended up going to my best friend's house i ended up giving her her gifts and obviously one of her gifts was the butterfly necklace she loved it and keep in mind the necklace was maybe like smaller than like the pendant i guess you can say was a little bit smaller than this it was like a smaller butterfly necklace and also too i never really seen her with big pendants so the sizing was a little bit tricky for me because i really wasn't sure i just knew that she wanted a butterfly necklace and also not to mention if this girl really knew my best friend like she swore she was one you wouldn't be asking me what gift 
um, I'm going to get her. And second of all, like, you wouldn't try to compete with me, you know? And you also wouldn't try to compete with the size of a panda. Like, bro, be for real. Anyway, so I believe it was that same day she got a text from that girl's family. Oh, let's not talk about that family. They ended up coming over and I actually had to hide in her mom's master bedroom with her brother. Yes. I just knew that my best friend knew that they didn't like me or felt some type of way towards me. The thing is, like, I never really gave them a reason. Like, if you were to go ask their family and this girl why they don't like me or what they feel towards me, I guarantee you they can't give you a reason. And they're and if you do ask them, they're just gonna be fake about it. And I don't I can't stand people like that. If you're gonna be two-faced, I don't want you near me. At this point, I am in the master bedroom with her brother. Just hearing everything that's going down. They're literally in the living room, and from the living room to the master room, you can hear everything. They had a one story so i heard all the conversations i heard the shit talking i heard everything that this family had to say i'm just listening to the conversation and the one thing that will always stick to me was when the mom was like oh our butterfly necklace is better than Ashley's and I was like bro really like at this point like you, you you think this is a competition like this is so sad like what really is your intention like what really was your purpose in getting the necklace to try to overpower me like for what like I don't understand like you're 40 50 years old and you're out here trying to compete with me like bro you don't even let your daughter talk like first of all the fact that like y'all really got a butterfly necklace too is one crazy like the audacity it also was wasn't even about the fact that they got the same gift as me they got a bigger pendant theirs was like this bigger and they were like oh well our pendant is way bigger and way nicer and i was like bro the audacity and me being me i'm such a nice person dude i literally just heard them talking shit the entire time i didn't get out of the room and i also like i said i'm not a drama girl so if i can stay away then i i will and the thing is like that family to this day doesn't even know that i was in the room and i know everything that was going on and also by the way if you're wondering i think she wears her neck this more which again i don't care it was more like the thought that counts but i mean to each their own girls are weird that's why i don't have girlfriends this is my story time 